Hello everyone, my name is David Boyle and I'm the CEO of Traction. Welcome to my webinar today called The Power of Tires. About a month ago I was at a, a conference um, and a group, a group of dealers and I was asked the question which I get asked often these days, what's going to be the impact that EVs are really going to have um, on our industry? There's lots of there's lots of talk out there right now that this is going to be uh, you know a, a major sort of game changing event for dealers with not only EVs but alternative sales models and things like that. I'm one of the people that doesn't believe that this is going to be as sort of revolutionary as everyone thinks. If you think about the ICE vehicle versus the EV vehicle, what's different? The only thing that's really different is the power plant. Um, you've got a, a gasoline engine versus an electric engine, but I, EVs still have a lot of things that obviously traditional vehicles that we've been used to forever have. We still have brakes, we still have tires, suspensions, we still have interior parts, infotainment system, things that are going to break and things that are going to need maintenance and things that are going to need repairs. So I believe that while there's certainly going to be change for dealers, I believe that there is a real silver lining in all of this and that is if dealers focus on an area of the business that Unfortunately, they haven't focused on as much as they should. Um, I actually think there's a big windfall here for dealers. And I think that if we get really good at the things that we traditionally haven't been good at, dealers can come out the other side of this even better than we went in. Obviously, I believe a big part of that is tires. Um, and it is an area of the business that dealers have traditionally not done very well. So you have to ask yourself, what do these guys know that dealers don't? Look at this list of businesses. These are very biz very successful businesses that have been in the service and repair business in the aftermarket for a long, long time. And they know something, quite frankly, right now that dealers aren't paying attention to. And that's the fact that dealers traditionally have not done well with tires. And as I'm going to show you here in this presentation, that when dealers don't do well for t with tires, it feeds that consumer right to them. And they know that. You know, one of the questions that, you know, they said earlier, one of the questions I get asked often is what's what's the future? And I tell dealers the future's right in front of your face. And what I mean by that is, is that the next time you're driving to the dealership, just take a look at what's around you. Take a look at a five mile radius around your dealership and look at the businesses that are there. That's your future. That's the business that you need to, quite frankly, steal back. You let it go and you need to steal it back. And that's what needs to become the future of your service operation. And I can tell you that it can be very lucrative, very profitable um, on, on many levels, as these companies well know. These companies right now are relying on the fact that dealers are not really good at tires. They're all, all of them, even ones that don't have tire in their name, are getting very good at doing tires because they recognize that there's a key factor to this that a lot of dealers have misunderstood for a long, long time, and that's this. And that is the fact that tires are in fact unequivocally the leading cause of service retention today. In fact, if you look at the data, it is so overwhelming that it's a bit mind boggling that more dealers haven't paid attention to this over the years. 90 plus percent of customers are going to defect from dealers today to buy tires elsewhere. This is direct data right from the Tire Industry Association that shows that when it comes to the replacement tire market, dealers have a very small market share, which means the vast majority of customers are defecting. And what we also know is, is that when they do defect, very few of them come back. This is the leak, if you will, that dealers have in their operations that we need to plug. The re retention or the defection in that area is seen in the fact that most dealers have this fairly dramatic drop-off, most OEMs, I should say, have this very dr dramatic drop-off in service retention right around the 30 to 40,000 mile mark. And those of you who heard me speak on this subject before uh, well know that, that the industry for years has assumed that this was the end of the 336 warranty period. But that has, myth has sort of been debunked a little bit. And the reality is, is that, well, yes, that is the end of the 336 warranty. Even manufacturers that have extended out their warranties to 100,000 miles in some cases aren't seeing a, a major shift in retention. They're still seeing that drop off around that 30 to 40,000 mile mark. The end of the warranty, as we've come to know it, 
recently with some with the data that we've got is a contributing factor to them defecting but it's not the trigger the trigger is in fact when they need tires and again, those of you who've heard me speak on this topic before know that this is something that I'm really trying to get dealers in the industry to understand is that it isn't the fact that the warranty is ending. It's what do they need? What is it that the vehicle needs that they have to reach into their pocket, i.e. it's not covered under warranty? And what is it? where, where are they spending that money? Are they spending it with you? Uh, the, at the dealership and you know based on the tire industry data the answer is they're not nine percent nine to ten percent are and the rest are spending that money elsewhere and as dealers this is the first thing that we need to understand we need to understand why are these customers defecting for us when it comes to tires when we let the customer defect obviously we're losing the tire sale but more importantly we're losing something much more lucrative than the tire sale and that is we're losing all of that future spend uh, that uh, is available because you know as the industry data shows once they defect they're not coming back you know the average spend according to consumer reports on vehicle service and maintenance in the first two to three years um, is less than a hundred dollars a visit now fast forward to a vehicle that's got 100,000 miles, now you're at four or $500 a visit, and that's obviously a much more lucrative repair, over, repair order and things that, that you, the dealers need to be trying to retain that business. Unfortunately, because we let them for defect for tires, we don't have that business in the future years. We're allowing that to slip right into the aftermarket, which is why so many of them have popped up uh, around dealers businesses and are there basically just picking up the cast offs uh, that the dealers uh, don't want. On average, if you look at this, that not selling tires to a consumer and letting them defect is costing the typical dealer over $2,000 in lost service revenue over the typical ownership of the vehicle. So we need to stop looking at tires as a single repair item and we need to look at it as sort of the gateway to all of this other work, the brake work, the suspension work, the alignment work, uh, steering and, and, and all the other work that we know we can find, um, but all of the repair work that goes along with this. And the tire really is the gateway to that because if we don't sell the tire initially, by the time the vehicle needs some of these more expensive and, and, and very lucrative customer pay repairs, that customer is already gone. So we have to find a way to make sure that that customer doesn't defect for tires so we can in fact keep the, this, uh, this service and repair work coming back, coming back to us. Switching gears just a little bit here, I wanna focus on one of these areas because probably one of the most underserved areas of our business uh, is that around alignments. The alignment really is and can be the holy grail in all of this for dealers. Dealers typically today are servicing about 11% of the alignment market. And there's such a huge opportunity because the, with newer vehicles in particular, it takes fairly specialized technician skill and equipment to do this. And it's only getting more complicated. And this is work that dealers should be getting 100% of. In fact, alignments need to be viewed, in my opinion, almost like scheduled maintenance in terms of it needs to be sort of a every visit you come in, we're going to inspect for it um, because it's it is a thing that um, needs to be done more frequently than I think people realize. Uh, and in particular, when it comes to the cost of replacement tires these days um, and a wheel alignment is a very cost effective way to make sure that you maximize um, the value that you're getting out of the tires that you've, you've, you've purchased. So huge opportunity here. Um, and I believe that alignment racks may be one of the most underutilized tool um, in, in, a, in a dealership. And what I tell dealers when I'm asked this question is that, you know, they, they say, well, what is the, what's the art of the possible? And the reality is, is that one in three vehicles need an alignment today is what our data shows. If there's not a car on your alignment rack every minute of every day, then you're missing opportunity. And um, you've got to find a way, you've got to find a methodology to, um, you know, to recapture that, recapture that, that, that those customers and capture that opportunity and capture that business. The last thing that I want to touch on in terms of the importance of tires um, is 
the impact that it has on the vehicle purchase or the next vehicle purchase. We, we know that, you know, obviously service plays a role um, in, in the, the, customer's, uh, the customer's decision process and where they're going to buy their next vehicle. And there's a sort of a window in time where we, what I refer to as the repurchase window, when, when many people start looking for replacement uh, or that next vehicle. And, you know, as this slide depicts, the vast majority of the dealer's customers have long defected at this point. Um, and the dealers, unfortunately, are in a mode now of having to try to recapture that customer um, to, um, to sell them another vehicle. We've always sort of anecdotally known that, you know, that these, that these two things, service and, and repurchase loyalty, are connected. And for the first time ever, there's some data um, that, that, that has been produced now in the industry uh, from Cox Automotive that sort of substantiate this. And I want to kind of slow down a little bit here because if there's anything that you want to pay attention to in this, in this presentation, it's these next two slides because I think there's, there's power here um, in these next two slides that we need to make sure that everybody um, has a chance to absorb. If a consumer has at least one service visit with your dealership in the last, in the 12 months prior to making a purchase decision, they are 74% more likely to buy another car from you. And again, I think anecdotally we've known that, but for the first time we can actually quantify it, which I think is very powerful. On the flip side of that, however, if they don't have a visit with you in the last 12 months prior to, in the prior, 12 months prior, I should say, to making that service decision, they are only 35% likely to buy another car from you, the dealer. So there's a delta there, a large delta of about 50% that is our opportunity uh, in terms of selling more vehicles. This should be a reason alone with what dealers spend on marketing and advertising to try to <clears throat> sell vehicles and, and retain customers. This, this, this slide alone should be impetus to make sure that a dealer is selling every tire they possibly can. Because for the first time ever, I think there's some hard linkage between selling tires, customers defecting, those customers when they defect, not coming back, and because they don't come back, it makes it harder to sell them another vehicle. Again, anecdotally as an industry, we've known this, but for the first time, I think we can connect the dots and say that selling more tires, in fact, does sell more vehicles. Every dealer needs to understand this, regardless of what we think our future is in terms of EVs and, and things of that nature, we have a now problem when it comes to retaining our customers. And we're going to make it easier on ourselves and make a whole lot more money if we plug this gap. And it's a simple gap. There's not a lot of things that we have to do here other than to figure out a way to sell something to a customer that they need. Sell something that they're going elsewhere to buy every day. $30 billion a year worth. It's a massive industry for replacement tires and dealers are not getting their fair share of it. And they're not getting their fair share of it because for years they've sort of looked at it as work I don't need. Well, you know, they, uh, the, 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 the industry's come first full circle um, and, um, and, and now it's time that we need this work and we're gonna need it even more uh, as we move forward. Um, and we need to figure out as an industry how we're going to win this tire war and how we're gonna in fact you know, be the tire place when it comes to uh, it, when it comes to the people that we sell vehicles to. So why are dealers not selling more tires today? Well, it's a complicated but yet very easy answer. Um, and it's complicated from the standpoint of that the business is complicated, right? The aftermarket in many ways uh, has an advantage over dealers because they really only do certain things. They don't do warranty, obviously work, they can't. So they don't have to be able to be, be uh, capable of doing a lot of the complex repairs that dealers do. They can focus just on certain things. In fact, there's obviously some franchises out there that just focus on tires at all, alone, I should say. And when all you're doing is focusing on one area, then obviously you can get very good at it. Um, and dealers don't have that luxury. But dealers do have the resources, the people and the wherewithal uh, to be very, very good at this if they choose. Um, and you'll notice that the, the finger in the middle is pointing back at the screen because that's the, that's the rub in all of this, if you choose. You know, if you allow service advisors, technicians, parts managers, 
you know, different people within the organization to make decisions on how your business is going to operate, uh, then you get what you get. Uh, but in the end, if you make this a priority for your dealership, uh, like anything, you will be successful. Um, and that's really the first step in all of this is, you know, you know, my simple answer is, is that the, uh, the solution is, is staring back at you in the mirror. Uh, and, uh, and, and it really starts with a mindset of this is a critical part of my business and we're going to win it and we're not going to allow anybody to buy tires anywhere else other than at my dealership, period. Now, how do we do that? Well, <clears throat> it does start with obviously doing things a little bit differently. And it's in some ways maybe a bit more radical than that because it really is a bit of rethinking businesses that we've always done it. You know, if we were starting with a clean sheet of paper, this wouldn't be as challenging as it is perhaps. But you got to remember for decades, we've sort of let that business slide away. And we've now, in my opinion, got to work twice as hard <clears throat> to try to reconvince the consumer that, you know what, we are their tire place. We are the place that they, you know, are going to be able to rely on to be their, their tire specialists and, and, and take care of all of their tire needs. So it starts there and it starts with re-engineering the process. And what I'd like to do here is take a few minutes and sort of talk about our vision of that, my vision of that, my company traction, our vision of what is rethinking this business as usual. The first step in this starts with what I like to refer to as a technology or data-driven approach. One of the challenges that we've got with the current processes today uh, is that there isn't a lot of data or technology uh, in these processes and it doesn't allow for us to have a sort of robust process and, and, and the ability to manage it and track it and, and compensate people on it and things of that nature. Um, because uh, because there's a lot of manual um, pieces in these process and it starts with how the tire is measured um, you know traditionally today we either in some cases we try to do this on the service drive but typically a tire is measured um, by a technician as part of doing a multi-point inspection and you know my experience has been that the accuracy of that um, is more than just a little bit hit and miss uh, technicians often, you know, are not super motivated to do tires. They don't make a lot of money. Again, if you're letting your technicians drive, whether your customers buy tire tires from you or not, then you can probably turn this off now or go back up a couple of slides and start over again. But in the end, if this is the, your goal is to make this be successful for your customers and for your business, um, then we've got to, you know, take the technician's desire out of this. Uh, and we've got to force the process. Uh, and that starts with taking the exercise of measuring the tire out of the hand of the technician. Because uh, they're it's really not in their minds, in their best interest, um, you know, to, to do this in some cases. So um, the accuracy of it and the adherence of the process are going to be very hit and miss at best. So what we've done at our company is we've taken the approach that says we're going to automate this entire process. We're going to make this easy, super easy. Like think of a big easy button. We're going to make this easy for your technicians because they're not going to have to do anything. We're going to make this easy for your service advisors because we're going to automate this whole process. And we're going to make it easy for your, for your managers because we're going to make it easy for them to make sure that the process is being adhered to um, by everyone. And it starts with capturing the necessary data to make an appropriate recommendation to the consumer. My company was one of the companies that, that uh, one of, we were the first company that sort of invented using technology, in this case, lasers and cameras and software to you know, measure the tires automatically. We've been doing it for about 10 years now and are very, very good at it. Um, and this is the launching off point, if you will, in what I believe is a good process is to find some way to capture this information in a in a in a data driven digital format so that you can then have a more robust process when it comes to recommending the needed services from tires from a tire and a line perspective to the consumer. So we've taken the, the measurement out of the hands of the service advisor. We're now going to take at least the first step of presenting the need out of the hands of the service advisor. Remember I said that we want to make it easy, but well, we want to make it easy, but we also want to make this process something that is can be repeatable every time. And just like with 
technicians, service advisors in some cases, not all of them, but many cases, are not necessarily motivated uh, to sell tires. And like I said earlier, you know, if you're going to let your service advisors determine whether or not you sell tires to your customer, then again, you can probably turn this, this presentation off at this point. But in the end, we have got to find a way to have a good process, a stellar process, in spite of the fact that our technicians and our service advisors may or may not be motivated necessarily to do what's right by the customer and by you in your in your dealership. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to create the ability to take this information, this very transparent information that comes from technology and pass that information directly to the consumer, give it to them directly on their smartphone so that when they come into your service department, um, they're with, within two or three seconds typically of arriving at your dealership, they're gonna get a text message from your dealership that's gonna tell them that there's some important safety information, tire safety information about their vehicle. And if they click on that link, it's gonna take them to a digital uh, interactive health report of their tires, which is gonna allow the consumer to educate themselves on what's needed and what you're going to be recommending to them once they sit down with a service advisor. So our goal here was to sort of prep the process, sort of tenderize the, the conversation, if you will, by getting the customer ready for it, but more importantly, sort of force the conversation, right? Because again, going back to what I said earlier, even if we have a service advisor that isn't necessarily motivated, when the customer's walking up and saying, hey, you know, you guys just sent me this text message, what does this mean? What do I need? They can't hide from the conversation at that point. They're going to have to do what's right by the customer and what's right by your dealership um, and recommend and, and follow through with what's needed in terms of tires and alignments um, on behalf of uh, on, on, uh, on, on the customers for the customer's benefit. So we wanted to, as I said, sort of force the conversation by educating the consumer. And there's a lot of valuable information that goes into this conversation because it's way more than just you know hey you need tires it's why it's and and we've never been good at the industry the industry in general quite frankly is not good at the why and the how and what's the value proposition and why is it why why did it, why get them, get them done here at the dealership as opposed to you know a Walmart or someplace like that and the re, and the fact of the matter is there's tons of value that the dealer provides in this in terms of understanding the OE recommendation putting the proper tire back on the car things of that nature but from the consumer perspective, whether it's tires or a wheel alignment, you know, what's the importance of a wheel alignment? I dare to say that probably many consumers don't even know what a wheel alignment really is. Uh, and when we start talking about things like tow and, and camber and things like that, all we're doing is confusing the situation. Customer doesn't know what that is, but they do understand fuel mileage. They do understand safety. They do understand braking ability and things of that nature. And those are the things that we want to we want to present and we want to present them consistently. So you know, relying again on the human element of the service advisor to do this properly and do this consistently. We took the approach of let's put this in the form of video and content and things like that, that we can send right to the consumer so they can self-educate um, and they can go into the conversation feeling empowered and feeling like they've been properly educated and can have a, and can have a proper conversation with, with the service advisor about their needs. <clears throat> One other thing that I want to touch on in terms of this, of this presentation that we it's an absolute critical necessity in this. And, and again, by taking this process at this point a little bit out of the hands of, of, our, of our technicians and our service advisors is this notion of selling the green. This is a critical piece to this because in many ways, we do our customers a huge disservice um, in, in, in the industry because the only time often that we start talking about things is when we think we can sell something. Uh, and customers know that in some cases, um, but in a lot of cases, and particularly with tires, uh, if you start talking about the need for tires when they're red, you probably already lost the opportunity. At least they're probably thinking something, you know, they, they know their tires are getting thin and they're probably thinking about where am I going to get this done? If you're going to win the business back, you need to reinforce that you're their tire expert 
on every visit. And it starts with visit one. It starts with, it potentially starts with the service walk around and orientation, but it starts with visit one. It starts with that very first service visit and every visit after there, you need to be in reinforcing the fact that you're in the tire game and you're their tire guy. You're their tire expert when it comes to their their safety and, and, and the proper maintenance on their vehicle, which is why we start at the green. And we sell the green, we sell the green, we sell the green, then we move to the yellow, yellow, and then eventually we move uh, into the red. And, um, and, and by that time, we've had numerous conversations with the customer about their tires. Uh, and there's a sort of a general sense that, hey, you know what, it's, it, it's a foregone conclusion that this is probably where I'm going to go get my tires done. Because every time I come in, you guys are talking to me about my tires and, 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 and giving me a health status on, on our tire. The other thing that I want to touch on quickly, because I think it's important, and this is a huge advantage that the dealer has uh, in terms of understanding the decision makers when it comes to buying tires. Uh, this is some research that was done by the industry uh, a number of years ago, and it really shows how um, understanding the customer's needs, and we really need to, uh, we really need to sort of dig into this. And again, it's not something that our service advisors and we as an industry typically do. But as you'll see here, what this chart is depicting is that as the vehicle ages, what's important to the consumer changes. And that's not just with tires, um, but certainly with tires because of the potential cost of the repair, the impact is more dramatic. And if you just look, for example, at, at the OE fitment, which is the yellow line on the screen, the first set of tires putting the OE fitment tire back on is probably very important to the consumer. Car's still relatively new. They still want that new car ride and feel. Um, you know, they still, it's, it still may be under warranty. They, you know, they wanna, they wanna keep that new car feel to it, right? But as that vehicle ages and we get into the higher mileage ranges and certainly, you know, once it's, once it's well out of warranty, that tends to wane a little bit and, and, the, and it's less important to the consumer. So we as an industry need to understand that because one of the things that we, we tend to do is that we tend to think, well, I'm always just going to put the OE tire back on. Well, that may work for the first replacement set, but if you don't understand the buying decisions or the drivers behind these buying decisions as you move forward, as that vehicle moves forward and you, you, you're, you're doing everything you can to try to retain that customer, now you're looking at a tire replacement in the 80,000 mile range and you're still pitching the OE fitment, you're likely still going to run the risk of that customer potentially defecting for maybe a less expensive alternative that they can get elsewhere because the OE fitment is less important to them at that point. And as you can see here, convenience and, and things of that nature um, and price sensitivity and all of those things um, have an impact on the purchase decision. Understanding this is a powerful, powerful piece of this. And <clears throat> we, I think we would be in a, in a bit of a losing battle if we tried to get every service advisor to, you know, sort of internalize this. The value of making this a digital process and presenting this information to the consumer is that technology can do this on their behalf, which is, again, that we understand the age of the vehicle. You know, not only are we as our, as, our, as our system measuring tires, but we're also integrated with the DMS. So we know the consumer's information, we know their mileage, we're getting all the ROs. So as the vehicle ages and as things change, the presentation and how we present it through that text message to the consumer can evolve because we can programmatically help alter what we're, what we're talking to the consumer based on how we know that they're that their 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 decision drivers are going to change over time. So another huge advantage of, of having sort of a digital or an electronic process that allows you to you know have a more robust and and a process that uh, is is better for not only the consumer but but for your business. The second piece of, of sort of the technology is okay. Well, we're going to give this information directly to the consumer. But we're not taking the service advisor completely uh, out of the conversation here. That's not what we think is best for you or for, or for your customer. But we do need to have the service advisor position themselves as more of a tire professional and more of a tire expert, which is what many consumers are looking to 
the, the, the aftermarket shops that have tire in their name. They perceive them as being the experts. We need to allow your service advisors to position themselves as being, you know, the tire expert. Um, and we do that through data information and, and that kind of power as well. Uh, so not only are we pri we're, we're, we're priming the pump with the consumer in terms of giving them this information, but we're feeding in a parallel path information right to the service advisor so they can are more informed, they can have a more professional and more informed conversation uh, with the consumer and build trust. Um, and from that trust comes loyalty um, and you'll sell more tires. And as I said earlier on in the presentation, you'll ultimately sell more cars uh, as a result of it. The next piece in this puzzle is making sure that we have a process that's being adhered to 100% of the time. It, you know, tires are a volume business and you know, it's going to be really tough to pick and choose which customers we want to retain. So let's just retain them all. All right. Let's just make sure that anybody that needs tires is going to get a recommendation and we're going to get a presentation and we're going to do our best to try to sell them that need so that everybody gets retained and everybody buys another car from us. That should be our goal. So having the ability to use data in a structure that allows management to manage the process is a key piece to the success um, the success equation here. We've got to be able to um, provide real time, uh, both shop level and individual level. So at the service advisor level and technician level data on who's performing and at what level. And this is critical to the success of this because, you know, everybody's going to need to be managed in this at one point or another. Um, and giving management tools to be able to do that uh, is a critical piece to success. The last piece of this is, I think, one of the probably the one of the most important pieces of that this and that is following up with those who don't buy and making sure that you are leveraging data and information from a marketing perspective to always try to win those tire those tire sale opportunities. So not everybody's going to buy same day. Um, it'd be great if they did, but we know they won't. Um, and the trick to winning that tire business and making sure that they don't defect is going to be to follow up with them and try to get them to come back, maybe sweeten the offer a little bit um, or, or whatever's needed. But again, if you believe in the notion that the tire is the key to the next vehicle sale, what would you do to make sure that you didn't let that tire sale go down the road and the $2,000 worth of service business go down with it and potentially the next vehicle sale? How hard would you work in order to make sure you sold that tire? I submit that most dealers, if they really understood this, would work as hard as they did on anything, quite frankly, to try to, to, try to sell, that, sell that tire. So follow up on sort of the same day visit losses are critical. But the other thing that is, I think, critical to this is using data to try to predict when that next uh, tire need for that vehicle or that, uh, that customer is going to be needed. And having RO data and having this tire scan data that we have, for the first time ever, we can offer our dealers now the ability to, in fact, do just that, to be able to predict when that next set of tires is going to be needed. Uh, so from a marketing perspective, you can do some individual one-to-one -one marketing with the consumer uh, well ahead of when they're going to need it. Let's not give them the opportunity to go shop you know, into the, in, in the aftermarket. Let's put your message back in front of the consumer in a timely manner when they are about to have a need and drive them back you know, to your business so that you can keep uh, the customer coming back and, um, and, and keep that service business and ultimately uh, uh, try to keep the uh, customer uh, or, or sell that customer the next vehicle. There's a lot here um, and there's a lot to sort of unwrap in all of this. Um, but I, the, the, the key takeaway from all of this, I think, is focus. Um, the industry has been talking about getting better at tires for a couple of decades, at least. Um, maybe as long as I've been in the business, we've been talking about uh, getting better at tires. Um, in fact, I remember back in the early days in my career, I remember seeing the commercials that Ford was running with Mike Rowe about, you know, the, you know, being Ford's, Ford being, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the consumer's tire shop. Um, and yet here we are, you know, a couple of decades later, 
Um, and the, the percentage of market share that the dealers have of the replacement market, in fact, has not gotten any better. Um, it's been flat for the past 15 to 20 years. Um, so the, 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 what that tells me is what we've been doing isn't the right things. We, we, need, we need to look at this differently. We need to look at this as, as, as you know, rethink business as usual, think outside of the box. Um, but more importantly, what it tells me is that as an industry, we need to wrap our arms around this. I believe that dealers are some of the most resourceful um, you know, um, um, entrepreneurs on the planet. Uh, and if you put your mind to it, I think everybody can kill it with tires. Everybody can win every tire sale out there um, and then reap the rewards of, of the service business that comes along with that, but also the next vehicle sale as a result of it. I want to thank you for uh, listening to the presentation today. Um, and um, I hope that uh, people got something out of this and, and I hope that everyone has an opportunity to uh, sort of rethink their tire business. And uh, I will do something now that I, 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 some people probably not, not do, but I, I believe so passionately about this that I would love to talk to anybody that wants to talk about this. And I'm gonna pass out my personal cell phone number. So my personal cell phone number is 714-726-9594. That again is 714-726-9594. If anybody wants to talk tires, call me because, call me crazy, but there's nothing better I like to do than talk about this segment of the business because I believe in it so passionately for dealers. Again, I thank you for watching and uh, let's get after the tire business.